Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Don, and we are at Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Wildwood. And this is Palm Sunday, oftentimes known as Passion Sunday. This is uh, a time that begins our vigil of Easter. And so today we want to recognize Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We're happy that you're joining us from wherever you might be. And um, for those of you who are members of this church, you received in an email the bulletin for this service. So feel free to follow along at home and uh, say aloud the parts that are printed in bold ink. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna to, to the Son, Son of David. Praise to Christ who comes as Messiah and Savior of the world. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. We shout praise to the living Christ who comes to rescue us from sin and death. Hosanna, Hosanna. 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 A reading now from the Gospel of Luke in the 19th chapter. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all of the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And now we invite you, if you have um, a hymnal at home, uh, an Evangelical Lutheran Book of Worship, uh, to join in with this traditional hymn as we can envision the Jesus entering Jerusalem with the adoring crowd waving their palms and laying their robes down in front of him. All glory, laud, and honor.
all glory, laud, and honor. That's what this day is all about. Let us confess our sins in the presence of one another and before God. I invite you at home to read aloud the words of our repenting statement. Gracious God, we come before you today knowing that we have not always lived up to our own expectations, much less yours. Our intentions are good, but our actions too often have been disappointing, sometimes even hurtful to others. Sometimes we have failed to love our neighbors as ourselves. We have not been truthful at all times. We have not always had clean thoughts or reached out to others in need. We too often put ourselves above others, failing to recognize that you created us, all of us, in your image, and that you love each of us unconditionally. Lord, today we walk with you carrying our burden of sin and laying it before you. Forgive us, Lord. Make our hearts clean, our thoughts pure, and our actions pleasing in your sight. Amen. It's my privilege to be able to declare to you as a called and ordained minister in the Church of Jesus Christ that all of our sins have been forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at the fourth verse. A reading from Isaiah. The servant of the Lord expresses absolute confidence in his final vindication. Despite the fact that he has been struck and spit upon, this characteristic of the servant played an important role in the early church's understanding of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to those who listen who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 118. The bold print is for those who are joining. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His fet steadfast love endures forever let israel say his steadfast love endures forever open to me the gates of righteousness that i may enter through them and give thanks to the lord this is the gate of the lord the righteous shall enter through it i thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation 
The stone, the stone that the builders, builders rejected, rejected has, has become, become the chief cornerstone. cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. it. Save us, we beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches. Up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, beginning with the fifth verse. A reading from Philippians. Paul uses an early Christian hymn to help us comprehend Jesus' obedience, selflessness, on the cross and how God has made Christ Lord over all reality. The perspective of the cross becomes the way we rightly understand God, Christ, our own lives, and fellowship within the community of Christ. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself, and he became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our gospel lesson today is the familiar passion story of Christ. As it is printed in Matthew chapter 27, beginning with the 11th verse. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas, so after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. And now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. And then he asks, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. 
see to it yourselves. And then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and they took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross, and they, they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those who were with him were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man, was God's son. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, and we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. We ask you to heal this land and stop the chaos we are currently experiencing. May the lands be whole again, Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Please, Lord, give us a vaccine for COVID-19. Bring your glory down and bless each and every person here on earth. Be with those now unemployed and those whose jobs are at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded and those ill with the coronavirus. Comfort those dying with this pandemic and their families. Tend to all people who cry out for relief of their illnesses or addictions, especially those that we have on our printed prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, we pray for all who will prepare and lead worship in this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to serve you, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Protect the doctors, nurses, and other first responders who are working hard to get this pandemic under control. Be with grocery store workers and truck drivers who are working tirelessly to keep our stores stocked. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord and all of God's people say, Amen. 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 If you haven't already done so, please submit your offering using one of the methods recently communicated. prayer of blessing. We, we offer, offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's join our voices together, reciting the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead, lead us, us not to temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. We're going to close today with the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. spirit. Thanks be to God. I want to thank you all for joining with us this morning in this unusual worship service of Palm Sunday. I pray that you are all abiding by the self-isolation mandate that has uh, now been placed for the entire state. I pray that you're well. I pray that you are filled with hope and are freed from fear. Until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you. Love the message. Hana, hayau. Le ahodo. Dat malan. Ina natu mashicha. Bara de Haleha Anea Na Good Oh,